The thing is, Meredith, Quran gives you a criteria. Mm -hmm. And that criteria, I think, is a criteria that human beings can agree with. They can't, they may not agree with the Quran, yeah. but they can agree with the criteria. Right. And that criteria is don't follow your forefathers, don't follow your society, don't follow your own desires. Because two human beings can be taught the same thing and they will have opposite reactions. So, for example, somebody may be a lung surgeon and they still smoke cigars. They have the logical idea that cigars are bad, but do they act upon it? No. So your desires don't lead you to truth either. So the Quran says society doesn't lead you to truth. Your desires don't lead you to truth. The only thing that leads you to truth is your sound intellect and what's within you. The Quran speaks about human nature. The human beings want to connect to something greater. Some of the best experiences that we as human beings have is when we see a waterfall. I saw the trap. When we see the night sky. You can play on your phone all day. You can be on WhatsApp. You can watch, you know, Dunkirk. You can see films. There's nothing that's more hair-raising for the human being than seeing something that's greater than us. Seeing something that more sublime. That's part of human nature. And what the Quran says is if you want to connect to God, then look into nature. Because nature is the book of God. You know, when I look at the human body, I think to myself, how can someone study this and not be in awe? You know, I just recently bought an iPhone 7, right? I was so happy. I got it one day, two days, three days later. I was like, just another phone? Just another phone? But, you know the human body? I have blood running through my body right now, right? And in my veins, in my capillaries, there's blood. If there's leakage in my body somewhere, what happens? I, I can die. I can have blo blood clots, right? Yet there is a leakage in my body and your body right now. It's in all human bodies. And the leakage is in your brain. There is a small part of the blood which comes out and is drops into a part of your brain which is tested for toxins all the time. So if you manage to eat something which is bad for you, your body will react because it will test that you have just eaten a toxin. Now that is phenomenal. You know your kidneys, it does amazing chemical analysis which the best labs in the world can't do. Now this design within us, this is the work of God. And the message of all the prophets of God, forget religion for now, the message of Jesus, the message of Moses, the message of Noah, the message of Abraham, was not to go around killing each other, fighting, taking over the world, whatever. It was, have the best relationship. Because relationships is what makes you happy. So Meredith, if I was to give you $1 billion, would you be, what would you buy? I don't, I don't think, well, I, don't know, I know where I think you're going to go with that. And I think it brings you back to like, your iPhone. It's not about this internal happiness. Yeah. And like fulfillment or whatever, that's the money. It's like, it's not going to do anything. The quality of your life, and I'm going to make a claim, I could be wrong, is only dependent upon the relationships you have with other people. And with, with every all our relationships in general. Right? Now, if I gave you a billion dollars and you could buy whatever you want, but no human beings to share that experience with, you'd be upset. Now, Islam teaches that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, "I came only." That's what he said to perfect uh, manners. I only came to help you with your relationships. So in Islam, the quality of your life is dependent upon the quality of your relationships. The best relationship you can have is with the one who created you. And after you have the relationship with the one who created you, Islam and all the prophets of God, they taught to have a good relationship with the environment and with other people. Because you were in your mother's womb for nine months. I didn't know you, your husband didn't know you from marriage, your friends didn't know you. And when you die and you go in your grave, you're going to be on your own. So you came from a womb and you're going to go into a tomb. And in between this time, the only common denominator, the only person that was present when you were in your mother's womb and when you will be in your grave is God. And if you have a relationship with God, 
God will show you signs that will lead you to happiness, that will lead you to tranquility, that will lead you to truth. We as Muslims, we don't believe in blind belief. We don't believe, oh, I'm raised in a Muslim family, so therefore I'm Muslim. Well, I'm going to say to this guy, why don't you become Muslim? We believe the best way you're arriving at truth is to use your mind and to use your relationship with God and ask Him for guidance. Do you mean to say that the atheists and all the, the people don't have mind? That's a good question. The thing is, I can be rushed. You know what, in this country, I sound like you're from Australia. Yeah, New Zealand. New Zealand, there you go. Sorry about that. Now, you know in this country, if you go buy a cigarette, packet it has a really hor horrific picture i don't know if you've seen it yeah. right now those people who are smoking cigarettes do they not know it's bad for them they do not know it's bad for them. Yeah. so logic doesn't mean it's going to affect your behavior it's about your heart and the quran says on the day of judgment the only person that will be saved is the one who has a sound heart a sound heart will always lead you to god and will always lead you to truth but the things which cloud the heart is society is other people is our own desires is our own sins and but when we try to cleanse our heart god will put happiness in our heart in the quran it says the only thing that will give you happiness the only thing that will give you inner peace is remembering God. Remembering God is not, you could be walking around Meredith, just walking out of Speaker's Corner, and you could look at the trees and think to yourself, every single tree has a cell, and every single cell has more information than all the books in the world. You just worshipped God by thinking that way. So Islam teaches we should be continuously worshipping God, and that is the purpose of life. That's what every religion tells, I think. Not only Islam or I am fascinated by interesting conversations about this kind of thing and learning out about other people's religions. I wouldn't say necessarily that I have one, but I'd love to hear about other people's views. And what would you? What's your opinion on all the others? Where do you sort of stand in your beliefs? Now I'm gonna make a claim, but I can't I can't justify the claim in this short time. No, that's fine. And I want you to investigate that in your own time. Yeah, that's all subscribe. Yeah. yeah. Now all human beings, the Prophet Muhammad said, are born upon a natural state. The natural state is a good state, it's not a bad state. So in Islam, we believe in presumption of innocence, and we always have. Even within here in Europe, about 500 years ago, if I accused you of being a witch, you would have to prove you're not a witch. But in Islam, every human being is innocent until they're proven guilty. Why? Because human beings are fundamentally good. So the Prophet Muhammad said, every human being is born upon a natural state, but it is their society which changes them, for good or worse. Now, all religions, fundamentally, I believe, Mo not all religions, I would say most religions originally came with the same message. I can't justify that in the short period of time, but I'll give you some evidence. For, for example, in ancient India, we had the Hindu religion. The Hindu religion fundamentally taught there's one God and you should worship God alone and you shouldn't make idols. This is what it says in the Vedas, the book of the Hindus. I, the the, it, oh, I, I, I can't justify this right now. Let me just complete this sentence, you are right? Something no, which is not no. True. Okay. The Veda the, says Maya. Okay. There's no okay. God okay. in uh, Hinduism. Okay. In the Persian religion, we have the prophet Zoroaster. Zoroasterism. Ancient Zoroaster religion taught you should only worship God alone. And today, you know, Hindus worship idols and uh, Zoroasters worship fire. Jesus, likewise, he came with a message you should worship God. I can give you a free copy of. Um, where's my bag? There you go. I can give you a free copy of the Quran. Thank you. This is actually written by Malmadu Pictal, who is an English aristocrat who traveled, who was a Christian, but he traveled the Muslim world, became Muslim, and he wrote the first translation of the Quran. It's in, even though the Quran is, even though it may seem like a big book. Every, the Quran has no beginning and no end from like chapter point of view. It's not about, you know in the Bible we have Genesis to Revelation, beginning to end. The Quran, it's not about reading a particular beginning to end. You can open it up anywhere. But one thing that I have experienced in my life and many people who've accepted Islam have experienced in their life. In this country we have a hundred thousand converts to Islam, right? 
All across the world, Islam is the largest growing religion, even though we have the biggest media misconceptions about us. And the reason why, and I'm going to make a claim, is because when people stop believing what they hear in the news and what society tells them, and they try to connect to God and read the Quran with an open mind, God guides. And I believe if you try and do that, God will guide you too. Um, I'm real big on like females, I should say. Um, what is your opinion on females? Because okay. I know from a lot of societal, you know, in the media and everything, and you say that you have kind of a bad view sometimes. They paint it in such a bad light. But this is my. That's all I see of it. So I just want to know, like, is that the truth or? Is this a blanket theory they're putting on everything? Some of the things they say in the media are true. Yeah. For example, Islam, women wear hijab. Yeah. Some of the things are false. But I just want to give you one piece of data. All across the world today, and from the beginning of time, women have been oppressed by men. The fundamental oppression started of women before their birth. Even in my own country, Pakistan, and originally India, and even in most of the world today, except the Western world, most of the world today, if somebody finds out they have a female child when they're pregnant, they sometimes have abortions or they're very upset. Even in my own country of Pakistan, people are very ignorant. In India, every single year, there's a one million abortions of female, females. Statistically, women have always been more than men, but in India, that statistic is more men than women because of abortions. The Quran, God makes a claim, and He makes a claim that there's a woman, there's only one childbirth story in the Quran, only one. There is a woman who's pregnant, and this woman who's pregnant, she's about to give birth. And when she's about to give birth, and she gives birth, a female baby comes out. And she cries out to God and says, why have you given me? Oh my God, this is a girl. I wanted a boy. And God says, the female is not like the male. And God is saying in that verse that the qualities of a female are a qualities that a male doesn't have. And we believe in Islam, there's qualities males have which females don't have. And in the Quran, 1400 years ago when the Prophet Muhammad came, and this is a historical fact you can check out, when the Arabs, because you know we didn't have, um, we couldn't know if the baby was male or female before it was born. When some females were born and if there was too many females, they were buried alive. This is a historical fact. And God says in the Quran that the female which is buried alive on the day of judgment will say, what sin did I commit that I died? Now I myself, I'm a Muslim. And as Muslims, we cannot lie. I only have two daughters. And I will never give up my two daughters for two sons. I swear by God. Why? Because God has honored the females like he's not honored the males. And the Prophet Muhammad said, any person who has three daughters and he takes care of them and he raises them, educates them, gets them married off, he will be with me in paradise like this. And he said, somebody said, what about two daughters? He said, two daughters as well. I have two daughters. And if for me, that's a gateway to paradise. The Prophet Muhammad never said that about men. Why? Because people generally, especially people, most of, the, most of humanity, they prefer boys to women. So I just gave you one piece of data from Islam to show you that men and women in Islam are equal. The Prophet Muhammad said, Females are the twin. Um, yes. What's the translation? Female. Say the Arabic again. Yes. Females are the twin mates of males. The twin halves. Twin halves. They're the same. The only difference in Islam, and I'm going to be frank about it, we believe the women and men are equal, but they're not the same. So the rights of a woman are not the rights of a man. These rights are different. Now you may think to yourself, and there may be things in Islam which do not fit your paradigm. You may think, why does a woman have to wear a hijab but a man doesn't? I can't answer that question. I can only show you why I believe Islam to be true. But what I can say to you is that 
Okay, what I can say, what I can say is this. One, one, b b before you took over, one, one thing. God, all throughout, all throughout humanity, people have different morals. I believe the best person who can tell you the right way to live and not live is God. So if God says something, I follow it. In Islam, a man is not allowed to wear gold. A woman is. A man is not allowed to wear silk. A woman is. I'm married and I've been married for five years. I just got paid two days ago. And when I got paid, two thirds of my pay I gave to my wife. Because in Islam, a woman, if she earns, if, like my wife works as well sometimes and I work. When she earns money, she keeps her money because in Islam, a woman doesn't have to share her wealth. But in Islam, I have to provide for her. Now somebody can say, that's oppression on men, not women. I can't wear gold, I can't wear this. But I accept it because God said it. That's basically it. You guys can carry on. Because I need to go pray. But it's fantastic speaking to you. Thank you. Just come in here.